Mia and John are a young couple expecting their first baby. As a gift, John brings home an antique doll to add to his wife's collection. Oh my God, John! That's the one, right? You know how long I've been looking? I know. <laughs> but after a terrifying home invasion, the doll becomes more than just a plaything in Annabelle. Hi, I'm Kevin, and I'm here with Sean and Brenna. We're here to discuss the new horror film, Annabelle. We've all just seen it. Sean, <laughs> what, what did you think? It's not as good as The Conjuring. No. It's simply not as scary. Um, I do think that it does manage some tension uh, in a few moments throughout the film because it works in the same way that The Conjuring did because it's saying that the things in the dark are the things that really scare us and, you know, things that go bump in the night. It kind of plays on our old fears. And so I, I think that some of it works in that vein. Uh, I do think it becomes a little routine because all of the setups are essentially the same thing with this woman alone in the house, hears crazy things, and hijinks ensue. And so it really kind of ran out of gas before it ended. Everything is one note here. The plot is one note. What happens is one note. The characters are one note. The characters are, they're not even really characters. They're all sort of stereotypes. We have two women and a man as our main, main characters, essentially. And it's nice to see two female leads, one being white and one being black, but when you make them exist only as mother, she exists only as mother. That is her only role in this film. And the black woman exists as the sort of magical Negro trope, as well as mother. So that's all they exist for. And I don't think even Alfre Woodard is a lead character. She's hardly mm -hmm. in the movie, and she does, She only exists for that one thing. She exists for one thing, <laughs> and it's it's pointless, and it's it's almost disgusting, the what what they use her for in, in this day. And you're like, you know, I get it's a period piece, but you know, the, this kind of thing is just it, it's it doesn't feel believable. You said that they were trying to summon something. From what I've read in the past, these cults they don't summon ghosts. They summon inhuman spirits, something that's never existed in the flesh. Demons. What, what do they want? These movies, when you get the movies like The Conjuring, which use a lot of the stereotypes, but they use them effectively, you get to movies like this, where she literally, five or six times, hears a noise, gets up, walks really slow through a room, reaches out really slow. There was one point where it like took her so long to get to the <laughs> thing, I thought we were like watching a spoof. <laughs> What's happening right now? It just... And then the Conjuring, the she, main character, the, the female character was a strong one in that right. relationship in The Conjuring, and that one didn't yeah. play off these stereotypes. Those were actual characters. The, even the lead actor, Actress um, Annabelle Wallace. I know. Got to hire her. Right? That <laughs> had to be why <laughs> she have got to hire her. I mean, I don't. I haven't seen her in the Tudors or anything else. But she, towards the end, she just like everything was a whisper, and everything was like this cowering thing, and you couldn't hear her anymore. And she just did the same thing over and over again, and it but just got boring. It's not her fault. I felt that all the performances, particularly when we're used to sort of bad performances in horror movies, that's the the thing now. True. I felt that all these performances were really strong. They just weren't given anything to, to do. do with it because they're not characters. Like I mean. Like you were saying, she's not really a character. She's playing the same thing over and over again, and every setup is relying on her. She's alone in the house, something happens, she gets scared, and then we move on. But it doesn't know what kind of horror movie it wants to be. It's got elements of slasher, it's got elements of ghosts, and it's got elements of, de of demonic possession. The Conjuring kind of did that too. I mean, I think The Conjuring played with a lot of different elements from a lot of different horror films, and I think it was a lot of fun to sort of see all those elements at play. They don't mesh as well here. I don't necessarily fault them for doing that, because I think that that's sort of what is now in this series are all these elements. Demons can't just take souls, Mia. The soul needs to be offered to the demon before it can take it. Well, I don't plan on offering my soul anytime soon. The devil is the father of lies. Demons are his manipulators. No one ever plans to offer the soul. But how do we get rid of it? I don't know. It just felt like a cheap way to get a movie made because people seem to like the opening scene from The Conjuring. And so they're like, let's do a quickie, it cost $5 million. They hired the cinematographer from The Conjuring, John Leonetti, to do it. He has a way with the camera, but at times it was a little too pristine for me. Um, but the script wasn't very good. I mean, it just feels like a big rush job. You know, I think Leonetti has, he was a cinematographer on The Conjuring and Insidious. I think he does know a little bit about camera work and how to sort of uh, get that tension out. 
And I, even though this isn't a substantial entry in the horror genre, I do like the fact that the 2000s were sort of the decade of Saw. Mm. And it was all about, can we scare you with basically having the most Grossing disgusting kills yeah. possible? And now the pendulum has sort of swung back with James Wan, ironically, who helmed the first Saw movie, making Insidious and The Conjuring, to something that's more akin to, you know, Robert Wise's The Haunting. We're getting more back into, we can really scare you without having all of this crazy violence and bloodshed. And, and I like that. Annabelle is dumb. Bell, skip it. If you just want to see creepy things in a movie, Annabelle won't disappoint. However, if you want to see creepy things in a good movie, look elsewhere. Skip it. Annabelle has a few scares in the vein of The Conjuring, but it lacks muster in its second half, and eventually you get tired of being toyed with. So I'm going to say stream it. Well, our votes add up to a half a ticket, which is a skip it for Annabelle. Cheers. Cheers. Didn't yeah. pull your strings, huh? No. Did not. Oh, by yourself. <laughs>